Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today we're going to talk about testing coax with your Nano VNA. Uh, came up with some really cool things that I wanted to share with you. And hey, I got to toss a thank you out to all the other YouTubers out there that have done videos on the Nano VNA because I'm standing right now on the shoulders of giants. There's tons of great Nano VNA stuff out there. Uh, and I encourage you uh, to do a search on the Nano VNA and check out all the videos that are out there. Um, did quite a bit of research on how to do this. I mean, I knew how to do it in software, but uh, to do it right on the VNA and get a better understanding to be able to do this stuff out in the field, I thought was important. So I wanted to do that and share it with you. Anyway, oh! Hey, do me a favor, will you? If you like my videos, click on subscribe and click on the little notification icon. You'll get informed every time I come out with a new video. Um, if you like the video, hey, give me a thumbs up, will you? And, uh, you know, share the video. Let other people know about it. Anyway, with that, let's get on with the show. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at determining characteristic impedance of coax when you're not really sure. Is it 50 ohms? Is it 75 ohms? I looked at about three different methods. This one seemed to be the easiest. Um, it's a little, for lack of a better word, the longer the coax is, the better the reading is, the more accurate the reading is. But it should get you close enough, and for a $100 nano VNA, what the heck, right? Uh, it gives us the information that we need. So let's take a look at that. Now, for this particular exercise, let me go ahead and turn on the nano VNA. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Uh, but before I do that, let me show you the test setup on the coax that we're going to use. So we're going to start out, we're going to do this on two different pieces of coax. This piece right here, um, I basically have the test leads. I've got a uh, 50 ohm load on one side and I've got an adapter that's going to allow me to hook up to my test equipment. We're going to do this entire thing in the Smith chart, okay? And uh, for this particular cable... Uh, we're able to do this, and if I, I believe about six feet is about the limit on where you want to go with this. But on this particular setup, we're going to be able to use a, uh, let me zoom in on this a bit and adjust it out so we can see it. On this particular uh, piece of coax at this length, we're going to be able to use 50 kilohertz by 30 megahertz in order to make our calculation with information from the Smith chart. Now, calibration is really important on this. I calibrated this off screen. I encourage you to calibrate each time you turn this thing on. Um, you can always check your calibration, by the way, with the Smith chart fairly easy. And the way that you do that is right now I have an open on one end here. Let me bring it up where you can see it. This is open, okay, and you can see that my point is right there at the very, very um, far right of the Smith chart. I'm going to put a uh, uh, short on the end of this, and let's see what happens when I do that. You see that the short now, once it's settled down, has moved all the way over here, to the far left of the Smith chart, okay? And we can look at one more factor here by just sticking a uh, 50 ohm load to see where that sets on our Smith chart as well. And if you notice, it sits there right at the one-to-one, -one, okay? So with that, we have confirmed that our Smith chart is uh, calibrated fully and our nano VNA is all set. Now, what we're actually going to do is we're going to calculate the impedance. So to do that, I am going to hook this cable up to the nano VNA, hopefully without dragging the nano VNA across the table here. Let's see if we can do this. And 
And oh my goodness, look at that little circle that we have. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my marker and using the knob up at the top, I am going to go all the way to the left, which is going to rotate it to my lowest frequency. And I can see my frequency that's indexed right there at 50 kilohertz. All right. Now, what I want to do is I want to look up here and I can see that I have nano Henry's listed there, as well as the uh, resistance that's on the line. Uh, that means that I am in the top part of the chart. Everything in the top part that shows uh, up in the top part of the chart is inductive. Everything in the bottom part of the chart is not inductive, it's capacitive. And I'm not going to go heavily into Smith charts just because, but uh, it's kind of a neat, uh, a neat thing. You can learn a lot from it. I certainly, in playing with it, have learned more about the Smith chart than I ever did when I did uh, my license uh, studying. So uh, having one of these nano VNAs really brings this stuff to life for you if you go and play with it, okay? With that, I'm going to take and I'm going to increase the frequency until I go to the negative or the capacitive side of the chart. So I'm just going to hold it. it comes right around the top. Oh, and I'm, I'm looking here and I'm at nanofarads now and those nanofarads, right? That means I'm at the negative part. I'm going to come back. I want to wait till I get to Henry's. There's a Henry right there. Okay, so that's a nano Henry. If I go down one, there's a ferrite, uh, a farad, a nanofarad. So 57.4, 57.3. I'm going to call it 57 and a half. Now we're going to do a little math. The formula we're going to use is we're going to go ahead and use, uh, we're going to take and calculate out the square root of the impedance we read, which was, we decided on uh, 57. We could use 57.5, but let's just round it to a whole number. And we're going to multiply that by the um, capacity or the load that we have on the end of the coax, which is a 50 ohm load. And we're going to hit enter, and this should give us, we're at about 53 ohms of characteristic impedance for this coax. I'm confident that this now would come out as a 50 ohm piece of coax. You're going to pick up little bits of off on this every once in a while, so just be aware of that. But let's go ahead and prove our point because I'm always into proving points. <laughs> Let me go ahead and swing the camera back a bit. So I'm going to disconnect this coax here. And let me get this over to the side. Setting up for these shots, I have to tell you, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world to be able to work around all this stuff. Um, need to get the other end of the coax off here. Because I'm going to use it for the next shot. All right, so let me set this off to the side. It's a good spot right on the floor where I can trip over it. And let's find, ah, there it is. So here, I have another piece of coax. I'm going to put the, uh, uh, the load over on the end of this. Give me just a second. All right. There we go. And here I have a, another piece of coax right here. Uh, and uh, again, same test setup, right? I haven't changed anything, anything on my nano VNA. It's set the exact same way, but here I've got my 50 ohm load on one end and I have my hookup on the other. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna hook this up to the nano VNA. There's gonna be a couple interesting things you're gonna notice here. So let me get this hooked up. And uh, Come on. You'd think the longer coax would grab more, huh? All right, there we go. Okay, so notice something here. Look at this giant big sweep we have, right? 
much bigger than the 50 ohm coax. So let's go ahead and we're going to again roll this all the way back. And we can see at the starting point, right, right there, we're still nano Henry's. So that means that we're in the north side of the chart. So let's go ahead and rotate it till we get to, yeah, we hit a farad. Let's go back. Still a farad. Still a farad. There we go. There's a Henry. All right. 114.2. And then we'll pop forward and it's 114.3. So I'm going to call it 114. We're going to use our same calculation, which is going to be the square root of our reading, which is 114 times the load that we put on the end of the coax, which is 50 ohms. Oh, that's interesting. I got my formula wrong. Boy, 300 ohm coax, that'd be cool. Let's try that again. <clears throat> again, we're going to do our square root of 114 times 50. I think this looks a little better, huh? Let's see. There we go we have a 75 ohm piece of coax. And hey, guess what? I'm testing coax, I already know that, what it is, right? But this 75 ohm piece of coax is off one of my satellite dishes that I had at one time. So it's a, it's a valid test, all right? So that's how you figure out what the impedance is of a piece of coax that doesn't have any markings or whatever on it, or the markings have rubbed off, to see if it's valid to use. The next thing we're probably going to want to look at is going to be how to determine where the length, what the length of the coax is without getting out and measuring it. Um, but realistically, what you're actually looking for in the coax is opens and shorts. And you can hook to a piece of coax and actually find different connectors at different spots on the coax, which is kind of cool. Anyway, with that, uh, hey, that's all I got for this particular test. All right. So ever want to check the length of coax but didn't want to break out a big tape measure? Or are you having some issues or questions about whether there's something wrong with the coax? Um, well, the Nano VNA has capabilities to look at stuff in time domain as well as frequency domain. Um, so the reality of it is that we can actually look for opens or shorts in coax uh, with the Nano VNA. So let me show you how to set that up. We're going to uh, need to, let me turn this on, and I am going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. Let me, a uh, oh, little too far. Let's try there. Ah, good focus. Everything looks good. All right. So first off, we won't be using a Smith chart setup for this. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come over here and I need to change my display. So I'm going to select trace zero. Um, shut that trace off. We'll select trace zero. Right now I have trace zero set for um, SWR. But I am going to change its format and I am going to go down here to more and I am going to accept or um, I am going to select linear okay and then let's go back in and I am going to tell it that this is going to be and I always seem to have trouble finding this on there we go I'm going to go into transform so I went all the way back to that first menu going to go to transform and I'm going to change it to low pass impulse okay and then let's go ahead and turn on the transform all right so we'll go back there we go now I need to set this or no excuse me I need to set the stimulus or what my frequency ranges are going to be so for this, it gets a little funky. So my starting frequency, I want to keep as low as I can, okay, which is 50 kilohertz. But for my stop frequency, I need it to be high enough 
in order to actually um, see where the opening, the short or the open is occurring. So I found a formula. It was done by a, a gentleman, W2AEW, and it seems to work pretty well. Uh, I'm not playing around trying to redo the, the setups and everything else when I do it. So uh, pretty good on that. Uh, the formula actually is taking the uh, this mythical number, okay, uh, which is 5850. I'm not sure where he determined that, but we'll go ahead and use that. And divide it by the estimated number of meters that you believe the cable to be. Um, it, it turns out that the longer the cable is, the lower the frequency span you can do. But as you get into higher or shorter cables, you need a higher frequency. Um, so let's calculate out at about 10. Okay, we'll say 10 meters. And then we are going to multiply that by our velocity factor. Okay, so if I multiply out 10 meters is about 32 feet, right? So let's multiply that by our velocity factor, which in this particular case is uh, dot 85. And that gives me about oh 497 now i can bring that down and i'm going to bring that down to 300 because what's going to happen is the shorter that i make that the longer the cable it'll read but it changes the uh, uh how uh reliable the setting actually is so let's go ahead i'm going to go ahead and select my stop and i'm going to set my stop for 300 megahertz all right. Now I'm obviously going to need to, and by the way, you can see the start and the stop references here have nothing to do with frequency. This has to do with time. Okay. Now uh, I need to calibrate. So let's go ahead and take a break on that and I'll calibrate. Okay. Well, we're all done calibrating. And now what we're going to do, all we have to do now, believe it or not, is just hook our coax up. So let me uh, get in a position where I can do this and try not to disturb the position. Of course, I always do, but there we go. All right, so there that is. And let me go. Now, you see that giant spike? Okay, that's where it's seeing an open. So I am going to jump to that, and I can do that by selecting Marker search and just click on max and there i go right to that okay now i look at this and it shows that my uh distance okay it took 62.5 nanoseconds for the reflection to take place so my distance is actually 7.965 meters okay what does that work out to in feet? Well, we'll get out our handy calculator, and that's going to be, uh, let's see, what, what was the number? Seven point, we'll call it eight meters, and we'll multiply it by 3.28. It's about 26 feet. That's exactly the length of this coax. And you know what? This coax apparently doesn't have any opens, but, you know, what are these little bumps here? Well, maybe in a future video, I'll do some tests to try to show that. But for the most part, if I understand the way this is looking, I should actually be able to see connectors, right? So here, if I go search left a few times, I should get back to that first big one right there. And if I take a look at the distance there, it's one. Uh, 166 millimeters. Uh, I am going to take 166, or excuse me, let's uh, let me clear that. Let me take 0 0.166, and I will multiply that by uh, 3.28. That gives me 0.54, or about little over six inches 
guess what I'm looking at? Guess what I'm seeing? Let me go ahead and uh, back out a little bit so you can see. Of course, you can't see that way, but I'll drag this over. This is a six-inch cable. What it's seen is it's seen this right here. It is seen that connector, okay, that little blip. Now, what is the other blip on the far side? Mm -hmm. Good question. I'm really not sure. Uh, it could just be oh, possibly something that it sees as a harmonic or something else. Um, I'll zoom back into this a little bit. And we can go ahead and go back to that just to look and see if we uh, uh, can come up with a measurement on that. We'll click on max and let's search right. Okay, let me search left back to it. And that is at 15.98 meters. You know, that's exactly double the distance isn't it? Right? So we, we'd we say 16 meters almost. If I go back to maximum, 8 meters almost. I bet you that it's seen the reflection bounce back. Because remember, the amount of time it takes to go all the way out and all the way back in is double, right? So I'm thinking that that's what that is. Uh, that said, hey, if you know, let me know down in the comments, all right? Anyway, just wanted to show that as a bonus. Take care, folks. Well, I hope you liked that. Uh, I had a really good time doing this video. And, uh, you know, I hope that it helps you out. And, hey, any questions or comments, make them down below in the comments down there. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and let me know if you liked my video, okay? This is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73. Hope to hear you on the air.